Hi, my name is Mary Dignan, and I'm a deafblind mosaic artist. I'm really honored to be a part of Texas 2022 Deafblind Awareness Month because even though I am a longtime Californian, I'm also a native Texan, and I have lots of friends and family all over Texas. So a big part of my heart is deep in the heart of Texas. I made my first mosaic when I was 18 or 19 years old for a college art class. That was back in 1973. Black tree. Square mosaic of a black tree against a yellow-orange sun and gray-white sky made of ceramic and glass tile. I didn't make another mosaic for 25 years until after my brain tumor surgery. These are some of the early mosaics that I made back in the late 1990s and early, early 2000s. Scar heart. Round mosaic of a large heart of iridescent blue glass gems and shards of ivory blue and pink ceramic tile on background of ivory tile. Rain tree. Vertical rectangular mosaic of a large tree made of small pebbles and green glass gem leaves on background of blue stained glass and raining clouds made of white and clear glass gems. Healing Heart, round mosaic of a spiral heart in blue, pink, and teal glass gems and ceramic tile framed in ribbed cobalt blue tile. Today, after 25 years of making mosaics, I now make mosaics that look like this. Portrait Tree, vertical rectangle mosaic of a large tree made with brass ball chain with face emerging from upper tree trunk and lower branches. Leaves made of mirror and ball chain. Blue-green background. Linus, square mosaic of lion face and mane made of brass and silver ball chain and brown and amber stained glass on a blue stained glass background. Watching tree, square mosaic of tree made with nails and ball chain with leaves of mirror, ball chain, and watch faces. A half-hidden ghoul peeps out from the garden made of watch faces, mirror shards, glass gems, and stained glass. Lionel the Turk, square mosaic of turquoise lion sitting in a garden of bright flowers. Lion mane is made of orange, red, and yellow glass gems. Sky is iridescent white stained glass with a spiraling cloud of small glass gems. Mr. Peacock, square mosaic of a large peacock showing off feathers of blue and green stained glass and brass ball chain. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life and then I'll tell you some more about the mosaic. I was born in 1954 and when I wasn't talking by the time I was three, mom and dad were worried and they took me to several doctors to find out what might be wrong. Most of their doctors told them that I was mentally retarded and had other severe emotional issues as well. And every time mom and dad asked, well, do you think she might be deaf? A doctor would clap his hand behind my head, and because I could hear that sound, I would look. And they would go, no, she's not deaf, she's just mentally retarded. Finally, Mom and Dad got me to a good ENT specialist, and I had a proper hearing test, and it turned out that, yes, I was deaf. Mom and Dad put hearing aids on me and started working with the school system to get me into kindergarten. By then, it was 1959. I was four and a half years old, and we were in Corcoran, California, a small farm town in California, San Joaquin Valley. The school system wanted me to go to the school for the Kings County School for the Deaf and Mentally Retarded. Mom and Dad said, no, she's not mentally retarded, and with the hearing aids, she's not deaf. She needs to be with other hearing kids. The story is that Dad threatened the 
head of the school with great bodily injury at one point. And my mom went around to every single kindergarten teacher in Corcoran before she found one who would take me into her class. I was five years old, had been wearing my hearing aid for only a few months when I started kindergarten a few weeks late with other kids my own age who were literally a lifetime ahead of me in oral spoken language skills. It was a sink or swim situation for me. This was in the days before the ADA. There was no assumption that any child with a disability would be mainstreamed. Uh, there were hardly no accommodations whatsoever. And I was one of the lucky ones. Somehow I was smart enough and determined enough that I swam. And my parents not only believed in me, they expected me to do well. So I did do well. By the time I got to high school, I think it's safe to say that no one dared suggest I was mentally retarded. I finished high school in the top 10 to 15% of my class. I went on to college. And when I made that first mosaic, I probably was already legally blind, even though I didn't know it yet. Two years after I made that first mosaic, I went in for a routine eye checkup, expecting to get stronger reading glasses. I got those, and I also got the diagnosis that I was going blind from retinitis pigmentosa, or RP. I was 20 years old, it was 1975, and back then, even really good retinal specialists hadn't heard much about Usher syndrome. At the time, the RP diagnosis was a total distant dark cloud that I assumed I would deal with when it came. I figured I'd been doing just fine with the deafness and the hearing aids, and I would do just fine with the blindness when it came. It really is amazing how naive and fat-headed you can be when you're only 20 years old. So I finished college. I embarked upon a fabulous career. I went to work for a local daily newspaper and worked my way up to news reporter and farm editor. I went to Washington, D.C. and worked for a California congressman who championed agriculture and was a leader in water resources management reform. I came back to California and worked for the chairman of the California State Assembly Agriculture Committee. I went down to Bakersfield, California and worked for the largest agricultural contractor for state water project supplies. And eventually I went out on my own as Mary Dignan Consulting Services, specializing in legislative liaison and public relations for agriculture and water service entities. I love my work. I love the politics of it. I love the people I work with. And I was good at it. I also had absolutely no problem getting reasonable accommodation. And this was in the days before the Americans with Disabilities Act. Every single one of my employers knew that I wore hearing aids. They all knew that I needed hearing aid compatible telephones. They knew that I had retinitis pigmentosa, and they knew that I simply did not drive at night. That meant that if I had to go out of town for a meeting and I couldn't drive back home before night fell, they had to put me up in a hotel, or we had to figure out another way for me to get home. It was not a big deal. It was just part of making sure that I could produce the work that they wanted from me. I also wanted to end up playing on a higher level in the field of water management policy. And so I decided that I had to get better credentials. That meant either being a civil engineer or a lawyer. And I'm not good at math, but I'm very good at talking. So I went to law school. I started in 1990 with an eight degree visual field. 
I finished in 1994 with a four degree visual field and a Juris Doctorate with distinction. I passed the California State Bar Exam on my first try and I went to work for Chronic, Moskowitz, Tiedemann and Girard, one of Sacramento's more prestigious law firms that had an especially strong water and environmental resources law practice group. All during that time, again, I had no problem getting reasonable accommodation. I learned to use an FM system. I used a white cane. I learned to make everyone around me comfortable with the fact that I wore hearing aids and used an FM system and used a white cane. I would introduce myself at meetings by saying, Hi, I'm Mary Dignan with Chronic Moskovich. I'm here representing state water contractors. And there's two things you need to know about me. First, I don't hear very well, so I wear these two hearing aids. And that's why you see that FM system on the table. And by the way, please don't touch the system because it sends static right into my hearing aid. But that FM system adds juice to my hearing aids and it helps me hear you better. The next thing you need to know is that I only see through a very small keyhole. I can only see out of one eye and this is what I see. So I may see you right there, but I don't see you sitting over there, which is good because I don't like that person anyway. And everybody would laugh and I made it easy for them to joke about it. And I made it easy for them to say, Dignan, I'm over here, not over there. Or Dignan, did you hear that? I made it easy for them to give me the assistance I needed, and I was grateful for it. Even with all of the accommodation, with the hearing aid compatible telephone, with the adaptive computer technology, with the, the cane, the FM system, and everything else, I was getting overwhelmed. I simply could not keep up. No matter how hard I worked, I kept getting blinder and I kept getting deafer. Finally, I thought, you know, I, I have to opt out of the partner track and I, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. And I tried to resign and my law firm wouldn't let me. They said, Mary, we know that if you can figure this out, we can help you. So I asked to take a month off so that I could go home and think about it and get my head back together. And just before I took that month off, I found out that I had a brain tumor. It was an acoustic neuroma on my right cochlear and vestibular nerves. The surgery to remove that tumor severed my hearing nerve, so I'm stone deaf in this ear. It severed my vestibular balanced nerve, so I'm kind of wonky when I walk around sometimes. And it damaged my facial nerve so that the right side of my face still has a little bit of palsy 25 years after the surgery. But for the first eight months after my surgery, I could not move anything on this side of my face. I couldn't blink. Um, I had to learn to drink with a straw because everything would dribble out of my mouth. And without the hearing in this ear, I really simply went over the edge. I simply could not cut it practicing law anymore. Not and still charge clients in six minute increments. The surgery left me with a really bad dry eye problem and I still have to use eye drops in my eyes frequently. So I went home on disability and that started my mosaic career. I had to have something to do. And putting together mosaics piece by piece was healing and transformative as I struggled to put my life back together piece by piece. There was one mosaic that was particularly transformative for me. I was trying to make a spiral out of a broken plate. It was white and it had gold birds on it, golden cranes. 
and I was trying to make the pieces go into a spiral and instead they kept getting jostled and turning into a star no matter what I did. So finally I said, okay, be that way. And I made it into a star. And it turned out to be a pretty cool looking piece. Phoenix Star, square mosaic with five pointed star shape of white and gold porcelain shards and glass gems, yellow glass, sun face, and marbles in the center. Cobalt blue tile background and broken white tile frame. I call it my Phoenix Star. What this piece taught me is that sometimes when you are feeling completely broken, you just have to go with the brakes and let the brakes take you to your new life. I realized that by going with the brakes in this piece, I came up with a star that I could reach instead of just a broken plate that I was trying to put back together. If there is one thing that I could leave my audience with today, it's that no matter how broken, no matter how disabled, no matter how inadequate or frustrated you are, if you keep on reaching, you will get something. If you don't reach, you won't get anything. It really is possible to reach that star. Reach, synapse, and metamorphosis. Three vertical rectangle mosaics, all on iridescent turquoise background, showing first a mirrored hand reaching for a spiral star, then two mirrored hands reaching for each other and sparking in the middle, and finally a butterfly of pearl white stained glass, glass gems, and mirror shards. Thank you for listening to my story.